we're at the home of Randy Marks and Sharon Ashton. Randy, you have a beautiful arts and crafts style house, and I, in the structure of your landscape, I see that you've done a bit to kind of connect back to that style. Tell me about that. Well, I took a lot of inspiration from the rock that is in the house, mm -hmm. uh, the rock arches and the wall that encircles the property. And uh, I used that as a starting point, along with um, just my love of working with rock, and then created the low walls out in front and the pathways. Mm -hmm. So that provided the architecture for, yes. uh, for the plantings that I was doing. And the plantings, I know uh, we were talking earlier, and you are a student of landscape design and have your LEED certification. I imagine that's influenced your, your design quite a bit. It has. Mm -hmm. I've tried to, to uh, think about the effect that um, the plants that I'm using would have on the environment, uh, and uh, particularly in regard to their drought tolerance, mm -hmm. their use of water, uh, and uh, in low maintenance also. For example, this grass is a mixture of native grasses. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be mowed very often, doesn't right. need to be fertilized, and so it conserves a lot of resources. And you've applied, um, I would call it a xeriscape design strategy to the planting beds as well as the turf areas. To a great extent, it's not it's not totally a xeriscape, but um, mm -hmm. I have uh, I've been thinking about xeriscape yeah. uh, a lot in in the plantings that I've chosen. Well, and for this time of year, after the extreme heat and drought, mm -hmm. your gardens look beautiful. I imagine some of that speaks back to the plant material. Mm -hmm. In this particular garden down here, mm -hmm. it's these are all native plants, mm -hmm. so they've had a long time to adapt to our climate and the way it changes. Um, so they're all natives or variants of natives, and uh, so you can see by the color that some mm -hmm. of them have really done well through this heat. <laughs> yeah, and, and I see you're, uh, you have some liatris that's getting ready to bloom. Mm -hmm. um, and tell me about the grass on the far side, because that's just uh, really unusual and quite striking. That is a variant of blue grama, which is a native grass, and that particular variety is called Blonde Ambition. Mm -hmm. so, when it finally loses all of its green color, it'll just be this kind of shimmering Marilyn Monroe blonde color in the landscape. It looks really nice set against the salvia there. <laughs> I like that combination and, and uh, I love this burst of red from the salvia. Uh, it was brilliant uh, just a couple of weeks ago and I'm hoping it'll be the same in another couple of weeks for the tour. Absolutely. Well, the other thing I notice as I look through your landscape are the the little homemade touches, there's a lot of artwork, and I know uh, it kind of speaks to your former career as an artist. That's true. I was an artist for most of my adult life, mm -hmm. and uh, in the landscape, particularly in the back, we have some artwork by um, Ron Farrell, a good friend of, of ours, and also Iris Schlesinger, who is not a professional artist, but uh, he's a really um, fun amateur artist and then also Asia Scudder, uh, some of her pieces will be in the back as well, as, as long as maybe a couple of my own too. I think that connects really nicely with the, the arts and crafts style and everything you have here in the landscape. We tried to, uh, tried to make the landscape um, engaging mm -hmm. and um, we like art so uh, there will be more art even added as we go yeah, on. As you go along. Sure. Well, and uh, this is a work in progress, and mm -hmm. I think it's really exciting. You were showing me in the backyard, um, you know, as you're excavating and digging out, you're finding some really incredible pieces uh, that were left behind from before. There was, um, we discovered uh, the remains of a pond mm -hmm. and uh, some benches and tables. All of these were overgrown, totally overgrown. With, uh, with vines and weeds, so we didn't actually know what all was there. And, and as we keep on digging, we keep on finding more and more. Just a couple of days ago, I, I found a small patio mm -hmm. that I didn't even know existed back there. So um, looking forward to what else we might find in right. the next couple of weeks. And I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what you do with all of that. Oh, great. Yeah. An absolutely beautiful landscape. Thank you very much. of Carson and Marcia C. And joining me is Roger Runge, a landscape designer who's worked with the family. And uh, one of the things I really noticed first upon entering here is this sharp contrast between the public space out on the street and the private space back here. It really is a neat aspect of this garden because the 
house itself is so formal and the plantings in the front are symmetrical and informal too, but when you get in the back, mm -hmm. it becomes very, very casual, very informal, mm -hmm. and very livable in the back. Absolutely, very livable and comfortable. Um, there's two features back here that are just really prominent and we're standing under one of them. Right, mm -hmm. this uh, Wisteria Arbor is just spectacular, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it's such a nice way to get from the house as you move out into the it garden. It makes a great transition from mm -hmm. the house out into the garden. Mm -hmm. And then the maple. I think that's the oldest maple I've seen in Oklahoma. <laughs> definitely the biggest, I mean, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, definitely Japanese the biggest. Maple. Yeah, for a Japanese maple. Like you, yeah. the first time I saw it, I didn't recognize it when I just saw the trunk because I'd never seen a Japanese maple that mm -hmm. big. Really uh, Marcia shrug. thinks that may have uh, uh, its roots may have tapped into an old cistern below ground or something uh, like that. And keeping that, it happy. Right, right. <laughs> Same thing with the wisteria. Well, the prominent space out here in the backyard is this fountain, and it has it, a nice history, doesn't oh, it? Oh, <laughs> it's, it's such a great centerpiece. Mm -hmm. And uh, Carson City found the fountain in New Orleans and bought it for Marcia. Mm -hmm. And it's just an eclectic gem of a fountain. It's really unique. And um, uh, Marcia said that, uh, you know, sometimes in our winters they lose a few pieces mm -hmm. and so they just glue things back on. So it changes every year. They've got mementos from their travels. I and see some rose stones, very personal. a little bit of right. Oklahoma yeah, on there. Yeah. And the color around this planting a lot, um, it's all concentrated here. Really. Right, yeah, yeah. It's all, we've got this mm -hmm. incredible green backdrop. Mm -hmm. backdrop. Uh, around the garden and then all this color uh, concentrated here on this focal point. Mm -hmm. It really makes the garden look really big too to have all that green That's surrounding true. it. That's true, you get this depth. Uh, exactly, yeah the depth mm -hmm. is great because of the different textures mm -hmm. and layers. L let's look at that edge. I've, you know it's um, it's such a strong backdrop um, but there's there's nice layers to it as well. Oh right, there's lots of layers. Um, this band of junipers is, mm -hmm. isn't that great? It's it is different. It's three different junipers. Mm -hmm. You would never you know think of mixing them like that. But no. you get the same texture and the same forms, but some color no interest color. Um, without being too overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And then it contrasts with those big shiny dark green leaves of the magnolia and the. Um, hollies mm -hmm. and it's really hard to imagine when you're standing here that we're less than a mile from downtown Oklahoma City. It's very comfortable and secluded. It feels very private. Very private, mm -hmm. yes. There's some other interesting mixtures of plant material. Here we have this Japanese forest grass with the ferns. Mm -hmm. and, just, and the bishop's weed mm -hmm. and just lots of uh, textures and layers and um, a real great play of um, shades of green and that you know Marsha is the gardener mm -hmm. and she's uh, been playing with this garden for 20 years mm -hmm. it shows it she's experimented she's tried things and yeah. pulled it out and um, you know th some things have worked mm -hmm. and that's what she's uh, built on yeah. There's another little one that I have to mention because I found it so interesting. The Mahonia, which is such a rough and tough looking right, plant, right, yeah. sit against that Rex Begonia. Oh, I know. The <laughs> contrast of the textures and the colors really works. That Mahonia has just a hint of a, of a silver or blue to mm -hmm. it. And then that Rex Begonia really has that, that cool. silver mm -hmm. uh, light to it. With the other defining characteristic of this landscape are the living spaces. Very livable. Mm -hmm. um, we've got you know that first seating area there in front of the fireplace under that magnificent wisteria arbor. Yeah, very comfortable. Um, it is mm -hmm. so comfortable. And then this one, mm -hmm. we've got the backdrop of this old iron gate, mm -hmm. and um, the umbrella gives us the shade. Mm -hmm. um, it really is a, a really great place for them to relax. They're both very busy, travel a lot, mm -hmm. work a lot. And so it's a great place for them to come out and relax. Absolutely. And they're known for interior design. And right. you can really see how they've brought that out into the landscape. Exactly. And exactly. Giving it those nice special touches. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for uh, visiting with me great. in the landscape. Kim, it's great to see you again. Next we have the home of Susan and Rick Weimer. 
The Weimers worked with landscape designer Mike Lindsay to create a naturalistic landscape that not only provided a relaxed, comforting environment, but also felt at home within the neighborhood. Lindsay began the design process by studying the architectural plans of the 1936 home with its many arches and peaked roof line. His design beautifully complements the yellow brick house. The main structural feature is a dry creek bed that winds gently through both the front and backyards. A striking planting of evergreens frames the house and complements architectural features of the home. A gentle color scheme of yellows and blues plays across the front landscape. The backyard continues the curving rhythm of the front with large boulders accenting the creek bed. The flagstone path winds its way into the plantings of evergreen and flowering shrubs. And a playful wind sculpture provides a focal point to be enjoyed from the spacious wisteria covered deck where a trickling water feature invites one to rest a while and container plantings add to the ambience. Susan says she loves working in the gardens each day. They provide her a continual source of joy as she experiments with new plant material. Several beautiful specimens are featured in the landscape, including a magnificent deodar cedar in the front. And careful pruning of the vitex transforms this plant from a large shrub to an airy tree, allowing it to stand out among the shrubs and stonework. the home of Maggie and Phil Clayton and joining me is Phil. Uh, you have a really beautiful home first of all and the landscape is so welcoming and it really connects so nicely with the style of the, of the home. Thank you. I, I love the house. I mean the curb appeal was what originally attracted me to the house and, um, and so working on the garden wanting to make it a, uh, to maybe to match the, the Tudor style and, and to do something that was pseudo-English but maybe that had some great colors, didn't la have a lot of discipline, I think was, was something that I was interested in doing. I, I'm real, I think it's, it's turned out really nice. Remarkable. Thank you. But, and you say not very disciplined, but it's certainly well loved. I can tell that you enjoy uh, working out here. There's a lot of just beautiful um, colors carried through and textures and themes throughout the garden. Yeah, well, well that's true, true. We do go out here and we play and weed and pull, and I've got some people that help me. So I have to give them some credit too, but, <laughs> but um, yeah, you can start with a little bit of a vision, but yeah, we do love to get out here and work when we can. Mm -hmm. And you have a daughter who has a favorite spot up here. Tell I me do. about that. I do. I have a seven-year-old daughter named Molly, mm -hmm. and there's a movie called My Secret Garden. Mm -hmm. And so when we first moved in here, she discovered that there was a little pathway here. Oh, yes. Uh, and so mm -hmm. she'll come back here and she'll walk through this and she'll play and she'll find little, little bugs and worms <laughs> or, or ladybugs. and. And, uh, and this is her little special garden right here in this area here. Excellent. It's always nice to find a little connection for the uh, family. It's, it's a working garden. I mean, I've got our, we don't, you know, it's, I, I don't want to have a, a home or a garden where I don't feel like my daughter or the kids can't come and tromp around, you mm -hmm. know. So occasionally they may, they may romp around the flowers, but it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Well, and I could tell that you enjoy plants. You have some really, oh, unique uh, species that we don't see in everybody's garden. Mm -hmm. um, the false vervain, that would be one that uh, immediately caught my eye as something kind of out of out of character. This is the first year that we've had it and, and this has a, a tra attracted a lot of hummingbirds and uh, so it's kind of fun to see them jousting and, and kind of positioning and getting mm -hmm. around here so we've actually had more hummingbirds this year. I'm not sure if this is what attracted them but yeah, it's been really, really mm -hmm. fun to have it. I love it. I love the little corkscrew and, yeah. and how it just kind of, it has a little mind of its own. It's very playful. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then kind of on a, a different uh, spectrum here, this dwarf elm, this uh, Chinese elm, um, really interesting character. This is, this is new. And so mm -hmm. my wife always gets on to me because um, I grew up in Hawaii and was around a lot of Japanese influences. And, I tend to want to bonsai everything, so <laughs> so I'll probably <laughs> end up uh, starting to trim this and, mm -hmm. and shape this. It's going to be a work in progress, but I think it's really, really a neat, neat. When I saw this, I was thrilled to have that. Well, it just has such interesting characters, and I'm, it plays well into that bonsai. Come and see it in 10 years. I, I will yeah, certainly okay. do that. <laughs> well, going on that Japanese theme, I think we see a bit more of that in the backyard. Why don't we go take Please, a look? Please, come back. 
mentioned your desire to create a very family-friendly, comfortable living environment, and back here I really feel that. It's quite natural feeling. Okay. I have a seven and a half year old daughter, and I want her to be comfortable coming out here and playing. Well, mm -hmm. it's on weekends, we'll have 10 kids back here swimming and running around, and I don't want to be that dad that's worrying about his landscape or not having kids <laughs> run on the grass. So I, it was important to me that it's, a, it's maybe a, a living uh, garden, but that's also being used. Yeah. And, um, mm -hmm. and so I, I think we were able to manage to do that. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's been really fun. Of course, a focal point for me was, is, is my, Your koi, my koi pond. pond. And yeah. it's nice that you've really balanced those two, like the activity, the active area, and then your beautiful koi pond. Um, you have some magnificent koi in here, and I understand that's a, a passion of yours. Tell us. It is. Mm -hmm. um, I originally, and most people who start collecting or getting into koi usually just start because they want a water feature in their backyard. Mm -hmm. And so you get a water feature, and then before you know it, you throw a couple little feeder goldfish in, and then and then you kind of get hooked. And then you want to know why this fish costs five dollars and this fish costs <laughs> twenty or fifty. Right. And so I kind of got involved in that and, and I've actually gone to Japan a number mm -hmm. of times and have bought fish there with a friend of mine who actually has a koi dealership here. And uh, it's it's something that I just love. It uh, I think it's a it's a it's a the the Japanese call uh, koi living jewels. Mm -hmm. And so they breed these and there's a real art form to it and there's uh, many different varieties of koi with disciplines on color and pattern and size and balance and uh, I think that's very that I, I love that I think that's very beautiful and I've, and I've just really gotten into it and and I'm real proud of this is a third pond that I built and this is um this I think is probably of course the best one I've done so far but I, I'm really really happy with it so it's very relaxing uh, my daughter loves to come out here and feed them and mm -hmm. I'll come out here at the glass of wine in the evening and, and enjoy them and it's kind of become a nice focal point of the garden, but mm -hmm. but something that you know you can still walk around and play with. Yeah, and a nice uh, place of, of rest and yes. relaxation mm -hmm. as well. The pond itself is beautiful, and the landscaping around it, I think it just unites so well with its surroundings. Thank Quite you. wonderful. Now, another one of your uh, Hawaiian-influenced hobbies is yes. bonsai. It's bonsai. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I have a couple little bonsais here, the, my mm -hmm. ginkgo bonsais, yes. and, um, mm -hmm. and I've kind of potted a few here too. Um, I've gotten a few other specimen plants that I've actually kind of, that aren't true bonsais, but that I've kind of started you trimming like and shaping. Yeah, prune and shape. Yeah, my <laughs> wife, uh, much of my wife's chagrin, but yeah, so we'll, <laughs> but yeah, I really do. That's another thing that I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. And the ginkgos, I see them repeated in the landscape. Yeah. Um, do and you I saw, particularly favor that tree? It's my favorite tree. Okay. I love it. It's, um, the first time I saw ginkgos was actually, believe it or not, in New York. They, they line the streets of Manhattan. They're really tough trees. Tough trees. Yeah. They've been around for 200 million years. They mm -hmm. find them in fossils, one of the oldest living trees still. So they're extremely, uh, environmentally, they're resistant to a lot of conditions, yeah. or they can live in a lot of conditions, uh, drought resistant. Uh, and. Uh, and I just think they're beautiful. I love the form of the leaf and, yes. and how they look in the fall. And they really gorgeous. are mm -hmm. very unique yeah, and very you. beautiful, graceful. Some other interesting plants that I see, um, you have a, a limber pine and you know maybe most people just see a pine tree, but it's not one that I see in a lot of landscapes. So. It's a, that's, that's a, it's, it's been tough to grow. I've had a couple in here and lost it. This one has made it, mm -hmm. but I, I love the texture it is. It's very relaxed. It yeah. kind of goes with what you know, a, a more of a forest, I think, a, 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 like I always use the word undisciplined landscape, but mm -hmm. um, I, I, love the, I love the geometry of that, of that tree a lot, and it's beautiful. And one last one, you have a palm. Mm -hmm. I do have a palm. <laughs> is, that, is that to remind you of Hawaii? <laughs> yeah, it needs to get a little bigger. I don't know if it's going to grow coconuts, but yeah. Maybe yeah. not. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, mm -hmm. that is a, I, it's, you know, you don't really have an opportunity to grow a palm tree in Oklahoma, so. Yeah, yeah, when I heard that we could do many. that, I love it. <laughs> yes, I enjoy that too. Well, you have such a beautiful landscape, and I think it's a really nice balance of the discipline and the, the wild or natural. It's really come together in beautiful harmony. I'm glad to share it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.